Hi everyone, I'm Jay, this is the Camden Stitch. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, thanks for joining me today. This is the second part of my September and October makes. So today's edition is part two, hashtag Freya Fest. I made a lot of Freyas um, and that is because I have filmed a Freya special for my pattern drafting series. Now that will be coming up in the future because I've got a lot of footage to edit together and I've got a lot of garments that I need to show you different ways of doing. But for now, I want to show you the finished articles because they were burning a hole in my proverbial pockets. Last year, I did a batch sewing session of my Freya jumpers and I made nine and it wasn't the most successful mission because I wasn't careful enough about measuring um, the stretch percentage and that meant that at least two of them I couldn't get over my head. I mean, as in nowhere near was not going to happen. Um, and I took that into account this time and one of the dresses that I'm going to show you, I actually inserted a zip because I knew I wouldn't be able to fit it over my head. Um, but I was scrupulous about testing all the other ones for the stretch percentage and making sure that they would indeed go over my bonds. Now I've actually got a little pea head, so how anybody else with a bigger head manages, I do not know. I made in total um, 11 frayers on this occasion. So my entire frayer output is up to 20 now. I don't actually, it's not like I'm in love with it as a pattern, 100 million percent. It's just very, very, uh, it's very good basic, isn't it? Um, and I finished up basically using it like as a stretch block for me to work around and make lots of other patterns from. So I made six sweaters and uh, five dresses. So I shall show you them all now. So I, the first one I am wearing, it is a midi length dress and it has got a bishop sleeve hack and it's made in this lovely sort of um, quite thick knitted fabric uh, which was from Abacan last year um, in one of my big Abacan fabric hauls. I got it from Abacan Shrewsbury and it's navy and gold which I really love as a combination and it's really really warm. I made this dress twice, I made two different versions um, but it's exactly the same as this one and so it's midi length, it's got a slit at the side and I shall film a separate video showing you how I did the hack to get the sleeves and um, to elongate it. But yeah, made this twice. I thought it would be brilliant for winter and yeah, it's not let me down because it was really cool today and I had to go out and I was boiling. <laughs> it was too hot if anything. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with these. This is my first one. It is a made from a coral jersey from Textile Express. It says that although it's polyester, it's got like a cotton feel touch and it has and it's really nice. I didn't have enough to make the arms full length and I remember last time I actually made the mistake of making them with three quarter sleeves and it had the result that I didn't actually wear them because in the winter if it's cold enough for me to wear a polo neck then I damn straight when I have sleep cuffs that reach to my wrist. Um, so what I did with these is I actually cut an extra piece and I sewed a sleeve extension on and I did that with one or two of these and that should hopefully make it a lot more wearable. Um, I really like the colour of this, I like a sort of corally orange, I think it goes quite nicely with my hair. I made this mustard one, it was from my shop, the Fabric Edit, which I'm going to hold this plug up every time I plug my shop. Yeah, it's very nice, it's just the right stretchy, it's kind of a textured fabric. It's just perfect and I did the same sleevey sleeve trick then I started getting a bit creative. I made up this one in this yellow check jersey plug from my shop and I did my bishop sleeve hack and I'm very happy with this. I think that it'll look just lovely under a pinafore and funnily enough a red pinafore is one of the items I have that you should have seen in part one of my September October mates. Then I made these two velvet beauties. Now I flipping love these and look look at those colours on camera they look gorgeous but it could so easily have gone wrong because 
this velvet is cheap and nasty i got it from my local craft shop and i'm not sure if it's seconds but it's neither crushed velvet nor does the nap all lay the same way because if you look at the back of that you can actually see that this part is darker than that and there are areas on this um, on the back of this that look like you've like you've cut them against the nap even though I definitely didn't um, and that's because the nap is not even on it I mean it's just really really cheap below I think it was three quid a meter but honestly I overpaid um, so I only had a meter of each when I came to cut these out I realized that um, not only did I have to cut all the pieces on the same nap direction but the fabric was quite narrow I think it was 125 or 130 wide and I thought oh flipping heck I'm not going to be able to get <laughs> um I got the length of the sleeves out okay but I had to cut the back in half well actually that was fine I just uh, cut it with a 15 millimeter seam allowance there's enough room for me to cut the seam allowance and sew it down the back um and it was actually just as easy as sewing the ones that I did the sleeve extension on um, and then I decided to jazz them up with this neck cuff and I'm really pleased I did it looks really cute on it kind of catches the light really well oh, in fact the reason I did this originally was because I underneath the neck here you absolutely can't see it on camera but there is you can see it slightly there there is a honking grey line where it's been laid on the bolt and part of the nap's crush and there's no way I could get this mark out of it. It didn't matter if I tried to iron it in one direction, in the other direction, through a pressing cloth, etc. You could not get this mark across it and it was just along there and it looked a real mess. So I put this on to cover it and it actually works really, really well. But yeah, the colours are just gorgeous and I think it takes something that would otherwise have been a bit kind of well I don't know it might have been a bit of a fail in terms of I might have just given that fabric away taking it to a fabric swap or something because I didn't like it but yeah I've made it into something that really works and they are so warm as well so they are just perfect for this weather now sweaters I've saved my favorite one to last I am obsessed with pie crust neck collars. I remember Alexa Chung releasing a blouse for a collection that she did with Marks, with Marks and Spencers a few years ago and it had got a pie crust collar on it. I never bought that blouse but I remember seeing it and thinking it was just the coolest thing in the world and yeah so I put one on here and again I won't go into all the details of how I did that because I'm going to do it in a separate video so that you can see in detail how the neckline is made um, but I inserted sleeve ruff ruffles here and I just love it again it looks great under a pinafore that style just kind of really suits me because of my narrow shoulders I like the sleeves or the frill on the sleeves and yeah it's just really me really happy with this this fabric is again it's from um, the textile center off-white uh, I don't think it was cream I think it was ivory um, it was quite a while ago, I don't think they've got any left, but really, really happy with that. So let's go on to the dresses I made, shall we? So there's this one and the green one, which I've already spoken about with the bishop sleeves. And I don't know how many more times I can hold up my sleeves like this. And um, then I decided to uh, go a bit off piece and I made this one using some quite strange fabric from Pound Fabrics. But nonetheless, quite cool in a kind of retro way. It's the sort of thing you would find in your granny's fabric stash. But actually the fabric itself, it's kind of brushed. And it's not, I mean, it is polyester, but it doesn't feel polyester or nasty. It feels just really soft and warm. Um, so I put a, I there's loads of um, threads on here that I haven't snipped off yet. I put a frill neck collar on and I made a adjustment to give it a puff sleeve head and I put frills on the sleeves but I knew that there, were, there isn't enough stretch in this um, dress to make 
a Freya out of it, but I really wanted to make a Freya, so I inset an invisible zip. Pretty good for an invisible zip, isn't it? I just cut the back, and instead of cutting it on the so on the fold, I added a 15mm seam allowance to it, and just an inserted an invisible zip, and it's absolutely perfect, and I love that one. Then I decided to get even more complicated. I have had this dream dress for ages. If you saw my vlog about my autumn sewing plans, you'll have seen this sketch. I dreamed up this dress, I don't know, maybe a year ago, and it was kind of, it was just really my dream dress. It was like, if you take all the things I love about, sort of the things that are my style, um, and put it all into one dress, then this was it. And I've had it sketched out for so long, um, but I've not made it up. And doing this pattern drafting series kind of inspired me to get my bum in gear and make it up. And I decided to use the Freya as a base pattern. I won't tell you everything I did to cut the pattern, but I inserted a waist seam into it and I added some volume in the skirt. I decided to make it into a twirl first off to check that the depth of the seam was right and that basically that everything worked as it should. And so this is the one I made as a twirl. I'll pop in a picture of me wearing it because, you know, it's a black dress, it just won't show up on camera. Um, but I think, can you see the seam? No, I don't think you can even see the seam on this. But yeah, I used some really, really cheap black polyester jersey that I'd had in my stash for ages that I kept on looking at and thinking, oh, this is really cheap and nasty. Um, and I made it into this dress. To be honest, it looks brilliant in this dress and it doesn't look cheap and nasty at all. It looks great. So I'm really pleased with this and a little black frilly dress made out of a stretch fabric that you can just pull on. I think we'll get absolutely tons of wear. But let's talk about the, the main event. Now you can see that I've not quite finished it. I've actually got still some pins, pinning on the waistband, the belt and the final bow, but it's very nearly done. Oh, it just needs a hem as well. But what I did was I put in a curved empire waist. I added my neck frill and my sleeve frill. I also added a band of the matching navy crepe. This is just from, they're both from Colville, I think. If this one isn't from Colville, it might have been from Pound Fabrics, but uh, they're both cheap and cheerful polyester jerseys, um, but with a crepey texture. I think this is actually black and white stripe rather than navy and white, but you can't tell. It works great, I think. The only slight boo-boo I made was when I came to, I made the, rather than making the top up and then attaching the skirt, I made the front and the back first. Um, I don't know why I did that, it was a bit stupid because when I came to match them together, the, these in order to get these stripes to match, these seams didn't match. But that's fine because I intended to put a belt on it anyway, so the belt will cover that. Um, hopefully by the time I've f got this vlog up, I will have got some photos in. I can show you me wearing the dress. But isn't it lovely? I just think it's so me. It will be warm, it's comfy, it'll get a lot of wear, it's really flattering. Um, I just think it's lovely. So those are my Freyas. Can you let me know what you think of them? Can you tell me about if you've hacked a Freya and or a simple pattern like this, maybe the Coco, and what did you do? Um, are you sort of interested in seeing the ins and outs of how I made the different adjustments to the flat patterns? Um, I have done some other dresses for the pattern cutting series, I've done two other different ones um, which will be coming in the future as well. I've got absolutely shed loads of footage but it's a matter of putting it all in order so that it makes sense because I'm not a professional um, vlog sort of presenter in terms of filming one of those kind of how-to videos so I need to make sure that it all flows and makes sense. But anyway, I hope you have enjoyed my uh, little tour through my different frayers today. Oh, let me know which one is your favourite out of the 11 that I've made. That's all from me until the next time. If you haven't already subscribed, click on the subscribe button, give this vlog a thumbs up please, and click on the ding ding bell and you'll get notified every time I make one of these videos. Right, love you lots. Bye from Camden, bye.